All right. Hello everyone, and today it's a little bit different. I'm shooting it on my iPhone, uh, which is all right, but I figured this is a pretty cool opportunity because we're developing film in a dark room and in bags in our class. So you're gonna notice that we do a lot of it with our eyes closed, and that's because the bags are black and you can't see what your hands are doing and what's going on. So we figured we should just practice before we ruin an entire roll of film. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing. It's kind of wacky, it's kind of fun. Hope you guys enjoy and maybe learn something. For the sake of your sanity and mine, I've decided to put the clips into chronological order by way of how you actually do the process uh, so that you guys don't get confused. We practiced a lot and then did the actual process, but I'll put it in a more consistent order so it's easier to follow, so there. This is the first step of many, and each of these cameras has sort of a little canister in which all of the film needs to be rolled into, and so it's light proof so it doesn't get ruined as soon as you take the back off the camera, and you roll it into this little canister, and that's sort of like a way to transfer it, and you're going to hear just how tactile these cameras are, and I'll let you listen to that. Oh, I love the sound of this thing. See, I'm an expert. Oh, that doesn't feel good. The most difficult part of the process is trying to get the film onto the spool. And keep in mind we're doing this with our eyes closed because you're trying to do it in a bag. And inside of a bag you obviously can't see your hands. And you can see Carter is getting frustrated because he can't feed it into the little slots. And that was one of the intro clips, is him getting frustrated. And believe me, I also got so frustrated. But you have to get it onto that spool, wind it up. And that is what you put inside of the container that the chemicals go into. So you can see here, it's not spooling properly. And that was the most frustrating part of our day. Um, yo, did I just finesse the fuck out of it? Mark? I don't know, did you? I think, I think it's pretty good. During this run, we actually got to use the cartridge that the camera uses and we got to take the film out of there. So that was just an extra layer of something that we had to think about. And during all this, we completely forgot that the film was taped to the inside of that cartridge to keep it from like unwinding inside of the camera. So I don't really know how anyone actually found this fun. Is that at all it? Oh, you did it perfectly. <coughs> I did that. Ooh. Go upside down, upside down. Ooh. Where's my lid thing? Does this thing have an inside zipper, Carter? Wow. Oh, you're putting it on the lap? It's a bad idea. I think it's going to get all the like, cotton or wrinkles. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I got it. I think you got it. Oh, Jesus. I'm just looking at it now. Like, wow. That was rough. <laughs> yeah, this is not working. I don't even think it's working. The margin for error in this is so low, there are so many opportunities to mess this up and one of them is the chemicals. You need to put 500 milliliters into this beaker and then transfer it into your container so that there's enough to agitate but not enough for it to spill everywhere. We didn't spill it, luckily, but obviously it's chemicals and you need the right amounts, you need the right times, you can't unscrew the top halfway during the process, otherwise it's just going to ruin everything. There's just so many opportunities to ruin your film and your pictures that I'm glad we use digital cameras now. In order to enlarge the photos, first thing we have to do is take our film, take a tray like this, put the film in the tray, lined up so that you can see your shot through. After that, we come over here. Pretty much you put it through here, this shines light through, you'd put photosensitive paper right here, so it's kind of like a reverse camera where instead of your scene being like the outside world, you're seen as the photo being projected onto what is essentially an image sensor. Carter, would you be able to hit the lights for me? I would. 
then you get your photo just like that. And so you have to figure out how to re-expose it onto the photo paper. So you're basically doing two exposures. One exposure is in the camera, second exposure is onto the photo paper once it's enlarged. And then you have to go and develop everything.